Hi, my name is Dr. Vera Tarman. Today, I want to talk about drug-induced psychosis, particularly the variety that a person gets when they're taking too much cocaine or crack and crystal meth. Drug-induced psychosis with these particular drugs are, are specific to the stimulant effect and the actual euphoric or drug-induced effect. So I'm going to talk about both because it's actually both of those. Cocaine and crystal meth or crack and crystal meth are both stimulants primarily. And yes, they have a drug-induced effect, but let's talk about the stimulant piece first. Adrenaline is our natural stimulant in our body. Um, and adrenaline is what happens when I get anxious and nervous. It's part of the fight, flight, freeze syndrome. When I'm frightened about something um, in my brain, the amygdala gets triggered and I, am, I get a shot of adrenaline, which gets me ready to run or fight or freeze. I can take a drug that mimics that effect because as we already know, whenever a drug affects you, that means that there are already receptors that that drug is going to in the brain. And in this case, it's the adrenaline receptor, or at least part of it is that. When you take cocaine or crack or crystal meth, it's going and it's heightening the adrenaline response. Now, where does the psychosis come from that? So think about it. If you are just normally stressed or frightened or freaked out about something, you'll notice that your thoughts um, are usually go to where is the danger? Because that's what adrenaline is meant to do. It's meant to make us wary of danger. I mean, just as human beings, we already have a level of wariness that we're not even aware of. We notice things that are negative. We notice things that are different before we notice the positive, because there's a sort of level of our animal brain, our primal brain, that is always sussing out the circumstances to make sure that we're safe. And if um, we're a little bit tense, we notice the negative even more, and we notice uh, that are potentially threatening, or we may even imagine that they're threatening. Somebody who's anxious that means that their adrenaline is kind of like pushed on overdrive all the time and so that they're always anticipating the worst which is a natural thing that we all do but they are it's a heightened experience and and it because it's more than I guess normal we call that a pathology because it gets in the way of life because we're not always supposed to be anxious or worried about something adrenaline is there to serve as a function but it can be overused in anxiety and if you take a drug that's like taking extra adrenaline and so then therefore you're going Going to be heightened aware of something and extra anxious. Now, think about if you're really, really nervous about something. Let's say you're um, in a house and it's raining and you're alone in the house and you're on the third floor and all of a sudden it's raining and it's thundering outside and you're kind of a little bit nervous already and you hear a sound on the first floor. What happens? You hear that sound and you go, oh my God, what is that? And Think about what's actually happening in your brain. Your heart is starting to race. Your uh, breathing is getting short because you're basically getting ready to run or freeze or bite. And what's happening in the brain is that your time is slowing down. You hear things extra loud. You might even hear things and interpret them as dangerous when they actually aren't because you're in this heightened wariness phase, sussing out danger. And your brain is thinking, it's better for me to anticipate and fear the worst and hear things that even aren't there to protect me. So when you're at a heightened experience, you might actually hear things that aren't there and see things that aren't there. Well, now you take a drug where you triple that amount, that, that experience to three or four or five times that amount, you're going to have an acute sense of danger or fear and you may hear or see things that aren't there. So that's the hallucinatory effect of just too much adrenaline or a drug that has pushed the adrenaline on overdrive. Next, we have the drug-induced effect because remember I said that crystal meth, crack, and cocaine are adrenaline focused drugs or are they really heighten the adrenaline experience. Uh, the drug-induced effect is dopamine and dopamine is that neurochemical of anticipation looking ahead, um, gauging the future. What will happen if I hear something? What now will happen? And so we use the past to inform us, uh, but we're looking into the future and anticipating. Now, just take a, a moment out of this explanation, and I just want to tell you something interesting that's very useful for this uh, story that I'm telling you. A person who has schizophrenia, in other words, they have hallucinations where they hear things, auditory hallucinations, or visual hallucinations. They see things that aren't there and hear things that aren't 
aren't there. These are endemic in a, a person who has a, a florid episode of a, a schizophrenic episode. There's essentially too much dopamine in a particular part of the brain. And yes, in another part of the brain, the forebrain, there isn't enough, or this is how we understand schizophrenia. There's not enough in one part of the brain and too much in another part. And that's the part that gives what we call those fluid psychotic um, aspects of schizophrenia, too much dopamine. Now let's go back to our drug story. So there's the person, their, their dopamine is affected, that's the high, but dopamine, when you take a drug that enhances dopamine, which crystal meth does like profoundly, and, and cocaine and, and crystal, uh, pardon me, cocaine and crack as well, then you have extra dopamine and it, it mimics a schizophrenic episode because it's uh, besides it going to the euphoric center and making you high it's also going to the part of the brain that will create illusions delusions see and hallucinations in the same way as schizophrenia so it, it's that excess of dopamine now you have an experience where your adrenaline is driving forward like insanely driving forward and i mean insane in the sense that sanity is our normal amount that we are supposed to have of adrenaline now you're taking a drug where it's on overdrive you're essentially in insane territory if we want to call it if we want to see it that way you're moving out of the normal realm uh, and remember adrenaline makes you slightly afraid so a drug-induced psychosis here you are with the dopamine maybe starting off with a pleasant experience of the euphoric effect, which often happens with uh, uh, drugs and that's why people take them. But within um, sometimes moments, usually it takes a bit of time, the paranoia starts to develop because what's happening is euphoric effect. Now the adrenaline is kicking in and now you're starting to get anxious uh, and nervous fearful, starting to imagine negative consequences, starting to hear things that aren't there and see things that aren't there, looking for the negative. And you're also having that same similar experience of hearing and seeing things with the dopamine. Put those two together. So now you're going to have hallucinations that are potentially negative. Ask anybody who's had a drug induced psychosis, was that a good experience? You know, I mean, you might think, well, that's like LSD or like uh, MDMA, which are typically hallucinatory experiences that are pleasant unless you have a bad trip. But generally speaking, people take those drugs because they have those hallucinations in a positive way. But with a drug-induced psychosis, I have yet to have somebody tell me it's pleasant. It's usually fearful. They're feeling persecuted. They're feeling like um, they're hearing things that people are after them, talking about them in some sort of negative way. So that's basically drug-induced psychosis. Adrenaline on overdrive, dopamine on overdrive, put those two together, not a very pleasant experience. What do we do when a person comes into the emergency with a drug-induced psychosis? Well, we give them an anti-dopamine drug, which is the antipsychotics, like Abilify or Seroquel, Olanzapine, like we give them an antipsychotic, which is essentially an anti-dopamine drug. And we may give them a, a drug to dampen down the stimulant effect, which is often a benzodiazepine, something to calm the person down. And then we wait for that drug-induced psychosis to pass. Just out of interest sake, sometimes, especially when a person has been using these drugs for a very long time, the residual effect of that drug-induced psychosis takes a while to get better. It can sometimes for long-term use last for days to even weeks. It usually does go away, but it can uh, continue on. So that is the story of what a drug-induced psychosis is specific to stimulants such as cocaine, crack, and crystal meth. Thank you.